an FBI informant, has been charged with fabricating a multi-million dollar bribery scheme involving President Joe Biden, his son Hunter, and the Ukrainian energy company Burisma, a claim that is central to the Republican impeachment inquiry in Congress. Per prosecutors, Alexander Smirnov falsely responded to the FBI in June of 2020 that Burisma executives paid Hunter and Joe Biden five million each in 2015, 2016. An attorney for Hunter Biden, who is expected to give a deposition later this month, said the charges show the probe is, quote, based on dishonest, uncredible allegations and witnesses. So this is interesting timing, Jessica. We have had these allegations, or rather the FBI has had the allegations on this uh, 1023 form for years now. They were initially reported to an FBI field office from this confidential informant and basically pushed to the side and not investigated until Republicans started pushing for it through their impeachment inquiry. Now, what's interesting is that it was the FBI who told the House Oversight Committee that this was considered a highly valuable source. They had paid him somewhere between $100,000 and $200,000 for 10 years of his, uh, of his sourcing for the FBI. And now they've determined that he was lying about these allegations, that he did not have any contact with Burisma officials until 2017. So we, he would not have been privy to meetings in 2015 or 2016 when he claims that these officials uh, talked about bribing uh, the Biden family in exchange for policy changes. And there's obviously a lot of harm here. Um, he basically sent the FBI as well as the House Oversight Committee down a rabbit hole trying to spend time and waste time investigating false allegations. Uh, the details in the FBI's indictment or in the DOJ's indictment rather are pretty damning in terms of whether or not he was lying. And it also of course serves as a, a horrible distraction from the evidence that Republicans have in addition to this that there was potentially a bribery scheme with the Biden family and that there was corruption going on. So all around, I think this is a huge shame. It's also uh, an indictment of David Weiss, the special counsel from Delaware, um, because he did not investigate these allegations when they first happened. He basically um, put the, the form away in a box and decided not to look into it. And now that the probe has gone further and he's facing allegations of failing to follow up on tips, he's decided to bring this indictment against this particular witness. I mean, everything about this, I think, is just a story about the failure of the FBI repeatedly to properly handle confidential informants, to vet their sources properly, and all of the wasted time, energy, and money that we get as a result of it. Right, yeah, I, I wonder what the take was by the FBI immediately when they decided to file this away and not further investigate. Did they have more information that the public's not aware of as to why this may or may not be true? Uh, it's kind of funny now looking back on the Republican outrage about this, that how could the FBI not do anything with this you know, complaint? And it's very possible that they you know, investigated it to the extent and figured out this wasn't a very credible witness. He had a bias against Joe Biden. Who knows what happened internally, but now we're in a place where, yes, the evidence that we still do have is the salary that Hunter Biden was getting from Burisma, how he saw a significant drop in his salary as soon as Biden wasn't in office anymore, which now the situation is a, a lot more similar to the Jared Kushner relationship with the Saudi Arabian prince. He was tasked with working in the president's cabinet with Donald Trump and was specifically negotiating for Middle East peace. That's how he became friends with the Saudi Arabian prince and upon leaving public office, got a huge uh, investment into his um, you know, investment firm from uh, the prince who was uh, Mohammed bin Salman. So when you have a huge investment, a $2 billion investment, coming in from someone that I'm sure was central in the Middle East peace process negotiations, that's dramatic. And people are drawing comparisons right now, which is precisely why Jared Kushner has been speaking on this again, because it's not so different from the Hunter Biden deal. If anything, it's more egregious because he was in the cabinet and it's $2 billion, but also because you had during the Trump presidency, the pulling out from the Iran nuclear deal, Jared Kushner in his defense said, you know, I didn't do anything that wasn't in the interests of America. I'm sure Joe Biden and Hunter could claim the same thing and it would be handled differently by the Republicans. 
Well, let's go back for a minute to whether or not the 1023 form in terms of the allegations from this witness were or were not investigated at the time that they were reported. We know that they're not. David Weiss has said they were not. Um, that's according to this House Oversight investigation and the interviews that they've had with him. We also know that it was the FBI who considered this individual, Alexander Smirnoff, a, a highly valuable source until this indictment came down. FBI Director Christopher Wray, according to NBC News and other bureau officials, briefed members of Congress on this issue last year during in-person meetings. During those meetings, questions about the credibility of the confidential human source were asked by Republicans, and the FBI told them that he was highly valued by the FBI, was considered the go-to source in the region, and had been paid six figures for work to date. They also said they would not release records requested by Congress because the source was so highly valued and involved in multiple ongoing investigations. So it seems more likely that they didn't investigate what he was telling him in regards to the alleged bribery scheme, which we now know he did not have uh, any, any evidence of, because they were scared about what it could potentially uncover. Then when Republicans started pressing them as part of this impeachment inquiry, they decided, OK, we better look into this now. That was when it all unraveled, and they found out that this source apparently was not quite as good as they thought, and that he did not have knowledge of this information. And there's also still a lot of other evidence uh, remaining in terms of the Hunter Biden corruption, in addition just to his salary at Burisma. We have email messages between Hunter and Joe where they discuss uh, Joe Biden as vice president having communications with Ukrainian officials. It's not clear why his son needed to be on those emails. There's WhatsApp messages suggesting uh, um, that Hunter Biden had a deal with some Chinese foreign ministers to get certain things out of his father in exchange for money. There's additional testimony from Devin Archer, who testified to the idea that Joe Biden was the brand, that he was what Hunter Biden was selling, that Hunter repeatedly put Joe on speakerphone during business meetings in order to prove that he had access to the vice president. And earlier this week, actually, we had new testimony from Tony Bobulinski, who was one of the business partners, who has spoken for years consistently about his relationship with the Biden family and in the Biden family business. And this particular portion from Tony Bobulinski's testimony is very interesting where he says that law enforcement has basically been unwilling to speak with him since he started raising the allegations. He has not been asked to speak with anyone from the Biden administration, the Department of Justice, the FBI, the IRS, or local law enforcement, even though he has said for years that, uh, that Joe Biden was the big guy who was supposed to get 10% in the email that he sent to Hunter Biden. We also have the bank records being trafficked through the House Oversight Committee, as well as these new classified documents that uh, we, we read about in this report from the special counsel, Robert Hur that indicate there was a lot of overlap in the specific documents that were willfully retained by the president and Hunter Biden's business dealings, a whole lot of documents related to the the president's policies, the vice president's policies in Ukraine and China at the time. House Republicans are now uh, looking to get the transcript from that interview with the special counsel to see if there is any more evidence of this overlap between Joe and Hunter's businesses. Right. Yeah, we we could have had a relationship between the FBI and Smirnov in Ukraine. He could have been giving them information you know, on Russia, on various of the conflicts that had been you know, happening in Ukraine for quite some time. Many people described the country as in a state of civil war. So he could have been an extremely valuable FBI informant on some fronts, but it's apparent now that he did have a bias against the president. Now he didn't want him to win in 2020. And so it makes it a, a little bit even funnier now that the narrative was, yes, there was a $5 million payment and then another subsequent $5 million payment. These went to Hunter and Joe Biden but you're never gonna be able to find them because it seems that that was all fabricated, not because there was an intense web of financial transactions, how they hid this uh, these dollars flowing into the hands of the Bidens from Burisma. So it, very fascinating there. Of course, there's a, an ongoing investigation into other aspects of this, uh, of the Hunter Biden investigation. You know, was the salary something that went down upon him leaving because there were phone calls? We know now 
uh, that that testimony was hearsay, that the person that was actually sitting right with them while the phone call was happening was not the person who came forward and said that uh, Joe Biden was on speakerphone. So we have a lot of very circumstantial evidence, which seems to always be the case in these situations, right? We're never going to be able to prove that Jared Kushner and his negotiations in the Middle East was like, hey, you know what, Saudi prince, uh, I'm going to do some favors for you. You want X, Y, and Z. I'm going to go talk to Donald Trump, the president, and make sure that that's how we move forward here. Whether it's pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal, whether it's whether or not they're supporting the Saudis fight against the Houthis at that point in time, there could have been a number of things that are now all covered because they're national security concerns. They're classified information that are pertinent to the security of our country. So we can't really genuinely explore what Jared Kushner was up to that warranted from the wealth fund of the Saudi prince a $2 billion investment into Kushner's private equity firm after leaving office. There could have been all kinds of favors there. And I think it's a disservice to the public that we don't have members of Congress going into a skiff trying to weed out this corruption. And if you're upset about what we know for sure, which is the salary being exchanged to Hunter Biden from Burisma, you can create laws that someone who's close to the president, who's in his cabinet or family members, can't take money with people who own foreign entities because there's this risk that they could jeopardize the security of the people in the United States making deals that will enrich them personally, uh, you know, when it comes to foreign conflicts or even internally with America's largest corporations. Yeah, I think I agree with that, that uh, if you leave office, you shouldn't be able to make a ton of money based on the foreign connections that you made while you were in office. And just one last point I, I want to make before we wrap, but it is interesting that the FBI has failed to charge any of the confidential human sources that they used during the fake Russian collusion hoax, including Christopher Steele, Stefan Halper, and Rodney Jaffe. Um, none of them have been indicted for lying to the FBI, despite the fact that their claims were used to uh, launch a, an attempted coup against a sitting president. We'll be back with more Rising after this.